Hi everyone, it's me, Lindsay Madden, and welcome back to another episode of Chit Chat. Today I'll be talking about renting camera equipment, how to handle clients who want to have multiple outfit changes during their photo session, and lastly, what my favorite time of day is to photograph. Now, I don't want to waste any more of your time. I'm going to dive right into question number one. So question number one wasn't directed towards me per se. It was something that has actually come up over the past few weeks. It's with regards to renting camera equipment and whether or not you, you should do so. I personally think renting camera equipment is the best way to become an educated consumer. You wouldn't buy a car without test driving it first. So why would you do this with your photography equipment? When I first started in photography, I was incredibly overwhelmed with the prices of cameras, of lenses, of flashes, you name it. But I knew I wanted to show up to my photo shoots with the best equipment. And I didn't want to be scared off by the funds that I didn't have for buying this equipment. So I started to rent. And it was absolutely wonderful because I became educated about the items I was using that ultimately when I went to purchase them, I knew that this was the specific lens or the specific camera that I wanted in my little arsenal. So with that said, I highly suggest to photographers who are just starting out to rent, to try out different lenses, to try out different camera bodies. I also suggested to people who've even been in the industry for a while who are looking for an upgrade. If you want to know what all that fuss is about with that 5D Mark II, try it out, rent it. Same thing with those prime lenses, big fuss about them. Rent it, try it out. I currently am renting different macro lenses, different wide angle lenses, just so I know and become educated about ultimately what I'm going to buy next. So with that said, I'm based in New York City, so I rent from Adorama. They're here in New York City, based in Chelsea, and it's very, very simple to do. You just go on their website to the rental department, you check off the items that you wanna rent, you have the option to rent for a day, a three-day weekend, or even a week. And from there, you just go and pick it up, and once you're finished, you just drop it off. It is so simple. And I do believe that they ship to you as well if you're not in New York City. Some other companies that allow you to rent lenses, um, if you aren't here in New York City and do need a shipment made to you, would be lensdepot.com as well as borrowlenses.com. So those latter two companies I have never actually dealt with. Um, so I don't want to say one way or another about how they are. Um, so I would definitely highly suggest that you just check it out yourself. So I really hope this answered some questions that you may have be having if you're looking to make an upgrade or most importantly, if you're a photographer just getting started. Now my next question comes from Diana and she asks, how do you handle clients who want to have multiple outfit changes while having a photo session? Well, Diana, this is a great question and something that I do want to touch upon a little bit. So I don't operate in a studio. I'm what you call an on-location photographer. So I go where my clients want me to go. Nine times out of the 10, I am photographing in, let's say, Central Park, the city streets, on the beach. So really doesn't leave many optimal places for changing of clothes. So that's why I always tell my clients that if you want to bring an extra set of clothes, you will have to rough it a little bit and you might have to get change in your car or in a public restroom or we could stop by the nearest Starbucks for you to change in. And all of them are always willing to do so. So Diana, my suggestion to you would be to definitely offer that opportunity to your clients so that way they can change outfits, but make sure you let them know that they will have to either change in their car or in a public bathroom, that you will not be making stops at your apartment or their apartment or your studio. So as long as everyone's interests are aligned and everybody knows what's going on, I totally believe they would be down for doing it. So Diana, I hope that helped answer your question. My final question actually comes in response to a Facebook status that I put up yesterday. I posted the golden hour equals magical photos. And I actually got some emails from people just wondering what I meant by that. So I figured I'd clear the air right here and now. So the golden hour is actually that final hour right before the sun sets. And it literally leaves this beautiful golden and orangey color in the sky as long as the sun was out that day. You really won't see this effect when it's a cloudy day or an overcast day, but if the sun was out, then you will see this beautiful golden orange hazy hue that will just make your images so delicious and perfect. 
Now, if you're not comfortable with photographing in this type of light just yet, practice. Bring your friend or bring your brother or your sister out during this time of day and photograph away. Because I promise you, once you nail those settings and once you learn how to photograph in that type of light, your images will be taken to the next level. Also, for more people who are those morning people, which I can be, of course, if my clients want a sunrise photo session, the sunrise is also another beautiful time of day with the most beautiful light as well. So I hope this helped answer your questions as to what the golden hour is. Well, everyone, this concludes another episode of Chit Chat. Again, if you have any questions at all that you would like answered on a future episode, please send them my way and I will do my best to stay on top of this. I know I haven't been up here for probably a few weeks in it few weeks now and I am truly truly sorry so until then until my next episode have a wonderful week and keep those questions coming in bye